Welcome to the quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I'm the Get Fit Guy. And today we're going to find out what rhabdomyolysis is. We're also going to talk about how doing too much too soon can put you on the sidelines, but probably won't put you in dialysis. Now, According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, rhabdomyolysis is the breakdown of muscle tissue that leads to the release of muscle fiber contents into the blood. When muscle fiber is damaged, a protein called myoglobin is released into the bloodstream. It is then filtered out of the body by the kidneys. Rhabdomyolysis may be caused by injury or any other condition that damages skeletal muscle. Recently, there was an article published by the New York Times News Service titled, As Workouts Intensify, a Harmful Side Effect Grows More Common. The article tells the story of a woman named Christina D'Ambrosio, who went to her first spin class on a stationary bike. You know, the kind where you pedal like mad to top 40 hits as a spandex-clad instructor whoops and hollers at you? You know, for motivation? Well, apparently D'Ambrosio, who was a regular exerciser, quote-unquote, whatever that means, found the class more challenging than she had anticipated. By the end of the class, her legs were sore and wobbly. Now, join the club, sister. As the day went on, her legs hurt more and more. Her urine changed to a cola shade of brown, and she was also nauseated. So she went to the hospital, where a doctor told her that she had rhabdomyolysis, or rhabdo for short. Now, the article went on to explain that rhabdo is a rare but life-threatening condition, often caused by extreme exercise. The article says that, it occurs when overworked muscles begin to die and leak their contents into the bloodstream, straining the kidneys and causing severe pain. Which is true, especially in Christina D'Ambrosio's case. She had clearly overdone it and was paying the price. Now, why does this matter and why am I doing a podcast about it? Well, if you follow fitness folks on social media, even half as much as I do, you will know that this article has been shared and posted and reposted and printed and reprinted and heralded by all those fitness naysayers as yet another reason for them to remain sedentary. You know, those people who have every excuse in the world not to work out and also try to kill your runner's high along the way? Yeah, you know the one. The one who quotes the title of the article and then jumps straight to the part where the doctor says something terrifying like, they're all being pushed too hard and they're not trained to do this, and so they get really bad muscle trauma. Well, anyway... The reason I take such exception to this article is due to their explanation of rhabdo and for focusing so wholly on its link to exercise. I mean, sure, 26,000 people are affected by rhabdo each year in the USA, and it can have serious side effects and complications such as muscle pain, weakness, vomiting, confusion, and an irregular heartbeat. The most problematic complication being that some of the muscle breakdown products, a protein called myoglobin, are actually very harmful to the kidneys and can lead to kidney failure. <laughs> Sounds scary, right? 26,000 people exercising themselves into kidney failure? What? Well, if you dive deeper, that is nowhere near the entire story. The article makes it sound like exercising yourself into rhabdo is just a single pedal stroke away, like all of us fit folks should just stop what we're doing before it's too late. In reality, the majority of the 26,000 cases are due to muscle compression that can result from things like having your leg crushed in a car crash, alcohol abuse, the use of certain medications or illicit drugs, electrical shock injury, and even heat stroke. There is a list of causes of rhabdomyolysis as long as my arm in a paper from the State University of New York at Buffalo School of Medicine and Biomedical Studies featuring things like lightning strike, immobilization, extensive third-degree burn, crash injury, heat-related causes, heat stroke, malignant hypothermia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, ischemic limb injury, exertion causes, marathon running, physical overexertion in untrained athletes, pathological muscle exertion, heat dissipation impairment, and 
physical overexertion in persons with sickle cell disease. Now, I talked to a friend of mine who's an emergency nurse for over a decade now, and she has worked in three of the largest trauma centers in Canada, and she told me that she has only ever seen a small handful of cases of exercise-induced rhabdomyolysis, and two of those involved the use of illicit drugs immediately followed by some very poor decisions in the weight room. The New York Times article highlighted two papers one called Spinning-Induced Rhabdomyolysis and the Risk of Compartment Syndrome and Acute Kidney Injury, Two Cases and a Review of the Literature, and another paper called Increasing Incidence of Unique Clinical Characteristics of Spinning-Induced Rhabdomyolysis. Choosing these two papers gave the distinct impression that the author is attempting to point the finger in the general direction of spinning, or spin classes being a menace to society, But, as stated in the title, there were actually only two cases of spin-induced rhabdo in that first paper, both of whom were discharged, and I quote, with good mobility, sensation, and renal function, while the other paper reported only 14 cases between December 2010 through November 2014. Now, if you are one of those unfortunate souls out there who have exercised yourself into this state. I certainly didn't intend to poke fun at you or belittle your experience. Rhabdomyolysis is absolutely no fun and also nothing to laugh at. I'm merely bringing us down from the hype and hysteria. Can rhabdomyolysis result from overexertion in an exciting and energetic spin class or an enthusiastic throwdown at the squat rack? Well, yes, it can. Are you so at risk of this happening to you that you need to demand a refund on your Spin Queen Unlimited Sessions member card? Well, probably not. If you manage to make it all the way to the end of the New York Times article, you'll see in the conclusion, quote, I never thought that exercise could be dangerous, she said, but it can be when your body is not prepared for really intense levels. And that is is something that I can get behind. When I get asked what the most common cause of injury is that I've seen in all my years of coaching, I always have the same answer. Doing too much, too soon. And no, I'm not talking about rhabdo, although, as we've learned, that is one of the things that you could get, but I've actually never seen it. The closest I've ever gotten to a case of rhabdo is a few suspicious flecks of blood in a friend's urine after an Ironman triathlon, and one of my clients who had a story about getting it when she was a professional rock climber doing a CrossFit workout. But the too much too soon injuries that I'm talking about are things like shin splints, IT band friction syndrome, patellofemoral pain syndrome, sacroiliac joint pain, Achilles tendonitis, rotator cuff tendonitis, and the list of itises goes on and on. These are the real villains. These are the true boogeymen hiding in the bleachers that are just waiting for us to let our form falter, our technique slip, our ego get the best of us, or maybe we've skipped a recovery day in favor of a 100k group ride. These issues are well worth our attention and concern, which is a large reason why I encourage all my new athletes that I coach over at skywalkerfitness.ca to begin their training with a few weeks of what is commonly referred to in the surgical and fitness community anyway as prehab. What is prehab? Well, prehab is a program of training designed to prevent sports injuries. Depending on the program, sport, or event that's being trained for, it will begin with a movement assessment, a gait analysis, a flexibility test, a strength assessment, and a few other tricks of the trade to identify any weak links in your kinetic chain, which is also sometimes called the kinematic chain. Once those have been identified, a series of strengthening or mobility exercises will be prescribed to shore up the weaknesses before the actual program begins. This is a step that is often forgotten or skipped and is almost certainly the reason why incidence rates for running injuries is somewhere between 37 and 56%. Yes, I mean, we were indeed a species that was born to run. 
But we gave up that birthright when we decided to plop ourselves for hours on end in bucket seats and lumbar-supported chairs and reclining lazy boys and pillowy couches while outsourcing our basic survival needs to the local supermarket. You couldn't do that to our hunter-gatherer ancestors either and expect them to chase down their dinner, but more on that another day. In the end, I guess what I'm getting at is with the right amount of prehab and a little restraint, too much too soon doesn't have to be a problem. And it certainly doesn't have to result in a trip to the hospital for a dialysis treatment to help your kidneys filter those dastardly waste products from the not-so-common-after-all exercise-induced rhabdomyolysis. Now, if you have experience with rhabdo or know someone who has, or maybe you just want to learn more about it, head over to facebook.com slash getfitguy or twitter.com slash getfitguy and shoot me a note. Also, don't forget to head over to quickanddirtytips.com and look for this episode, episode 350. That's episode 350. Now, I'm Brock Armstrong, the Get Fit Guy, asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. <laughs>